sometimes known as Dr. Lou. He never want to get in a urinating contest with a skunk. He is Dr. Frank. The doctors will see you now on NFL Films Presents. In New York City's Flatiron District, Dr. John Frank arrives at his practice. Do you have any ear issues? Sometimes I feel like I can't hear, Dr. Frank. My husband's always complaining. This ear looks great. You can't hear or you don't listen? Both. Oh, okay. That's selective <laughs> hearing. Okay, lean forward. As an otolaryngologist, he's familiar with the maladies of the ear, nose, and throat. You don't have allergies, do you? Mm -hmm. Though few of his patients are probably familiar with his former career uh, as a tight end for the San Francisco 49ers. A career as interesting as it was unlikely. 84, Bill Walsh drafted me in the second round. I never anticipated I was really going to be playing in the NFL or even drafted, so I, di I, I didn't know who he was. A few years when I was in college, I wasn't following the NFL. I was just a chemistry major from Ohio State on my way to medical school. So the phone rang. I didn't say, who is this, but he said, it's the head coach. I said, John, uh, congratulations. The only coach Welsh I knew was the coach of Army at the time, George Welch. And so I said, oh, Coach Welch. He said, no, John, it's Coach Walsh. He just said, oh, well, we'll see you when you get out here. And I thought, oh, this is not going to be fun. So you're here, you're here. Frank quickly learned his coach's name and his supposedly innovative offense. It was the West Coast offense. I looked at the game plans and they really weren't impressive. The X's and O's weren't that complicated with the short passes and the quick slants. It seemed very basic. So we don't need any kind of fancy moves by the tight end. Four yard gain. You get that out of the play, it worked. In his first training camp, Frank was an unknown on a team of stars most of whom were unknown to him. I really didn't know that much about the 49ers. I had heard Joe Montana's name. He was from Western Pennsylvania, where I'm from. So I knew who Joe Montana was, but that was about it. And then we started my rookie year. On a Monday night in New York, the Niners unleashed more primetime devastation than the A-team. My first catch in the NFL was a touchdown pass in, at the Meadowlands. It was on a Monday night game. Again, at the time, I didn't realize what a big event that would be for me. Fires it out to the rookie. <laughs> John Frank does his first reception, and it's a touchdown. He wanted to spike it, didn't he? He oh, thought yeah. Is this against the rules or what? Frank was unclear on the NFL's celebration rules and certainly didn't know the name of the future Hall of Fame linebacker he had beaten on the play. I didn't even know who Lawrence Taylor was. In the regular season game where I caught that first touchdown, he was just a name. We faced the Giants again that year in the playoffs, and we were watching the film, and his name kept coming up. So we want to go after Taylor with a guard. Miss Taylor, for God's sake, stay with her. Now, don't leave Taylor early. Finally, I said to John Ayers, who was the guard at the time, What's all this attention about? And he said, well, this is Lawrence Taylor. We're going to double team him on every pass play. Taylor's on the left, but our tight end, John, is going to come around here, beautiful. And Randy Cross just looked at me and said, John, you don't know who Lawrence Taylor is? And I was embarrassed. It was one of those things where, you, you know, you sort of have to fake it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's good, Lawrence Taylor. And, but I was just really out in left field. From left field, Frank met Lawrence Taylor, center stage. Here's Lawrence Taylor involved with a fracas. It's John Frank. It became a wrestling match and got a lot of coverage. That should be broadcast on Saturday morning somewhere. I love that guy's jump from the ropes and stuff. I think I made the All Madden team that year. Bill Walsh was saying this guy's always in fights because he always blocks guys and stays with them. And that's exactly what he did with Lawrence Taylor. Look, Taylor has him. Frank gets a reversal. Taylor's going for the reversal. Frank gets a pin. In some ways, that sort of defined my rookie year. The following week, Frank's season was defined in a different way. We played the Bears in the NFC Championship game, and I fell off a block, and I fell on my arm, and I hyperextended my elbow. It was questionable for the Super Bowl. Somehow I convinced them that I was able to play. 
I played in the game with this massive cast on my elbow, and I didn't catch any passes, and, and I really wasn't a, a factor at all. But I was there. It was really a great game. As the 49ers won their second Super Bowl title under Bill Walsh, number 86 watched from the best seat in the house. But his celebration would be far shorter than that of his teammates. I packed up my apartment within 24 hours, and I think within 48 hours, I was back in a classroom and studying medicine. Football for me was always a hobby. Really, truly, I was passing through. And I never lost sight of that. I knew in my heart that I was only going to play for a few years. I was going to medical school come hell or high water. I was more committed to that than I had been to blocking Lawrence Taylor. Does it hurt when I when you just touch your ear here? Today, I'm always a little bit sheepish to tell my patients that I was a football player. And even when they say, hey, Doc, I Googled you, you didn't tell me you played in the Super Bowl. From Ohio State, John Frank. Let go, John Frank. Super Bowl 23 was one of the most amazing Super Bowls. And for me, I anticipated it was going to be my last game. Clutch man, clutch man, clutch man. Especially if we won the game. I caught two passes in the Super Bowl. I played very well. We played well enough to win, but I think the Bengals really outplayed us and should have won the game. The Bengals take a 16 to 13 lead. During the last drive of Super Bowl 23. Montana again is back to throw. I was in on the series. I caught a pass. A little dunk over the middle, caught by John Frank, and that'll be a first down. We scored the winning touchdown on that last drive. 39 seconds remaining. That pass to John Taylor. Montana steps up, throws. jubilation Harris Barton grabs me and lifts me up and I have this photo of him I'm on his shoulders and and we won the game it was we it was uh, Super Bowl 23 we we won <laughs> in the locker room the tight end destined to make a career of healing laid the toughest hit of the day on the 49ers owner Eddie DeBartolo the game's over and we run into the locker room and there's Eddie Come here. I grabbed him, I picked him up, and I shook him. I'm like, you know, this is it, this is it. And I don't know, I think I must have tripped on the on some on the locker or something. And before I knew it, Eddie was sitting in the lock in a locker after banging his head against the back of the locker. He's grabbing his head, looking to see if he's cut his scalp open. I got a knot on my head. Honest to God, I'm half groggy. Uh, John Frank yanked me into that locker over there. Fill my fill my head. You got it. Watch, I feel my head. <laughs> oh, print it. His expression, it's just so clear on his face that he's not happy about it. And I mean, I, I was going to retire anyway, so I think he forgave me. It's a challenge to leave the NFL, even for me on my own accord. I'm sure more difficult if you're cut or if you're too old to play. I can't even imagine the psychological challenges that you have to overcome to move on. Football can be so capturing and so all-encompassing. Damn, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's important to demonstrate that there is life on the other side of football, and I've tried to do that. In 2003, Frank slid back into athletics and his Jewish roots. We created the Israeli bobsled team, a two-man bobsled. I was the team's brake man, and Aaron Zeff, a former U.S. Air Force aviator, was the pilot, and we just built it from scratch. We saw that there were some other countries which had bobsled teams like Jamaica and some smaller countries, and felt like it would be a good feel-good opportunity to do something and, and give something back. And we became Israeli citizens and represented Israel and competed in the 2004 World Championships in Königsee, Germany. We placed, I think, 34th. There were a lot of fun moments with that. One of our nicknames, amongst other things, we were the Frozen Chosen. We really needed to raise a fair amount of money for the venture, so we sold some sponsorships for the sides of the sled. And unlike most of the teams, we were selling a sponsorship for the bottom of the sled so that whenever 
before we tilted and slid down on our sides, the bottom would show up, which happened a lot. So I did that for about four years and then turned it over to some younger athletes. It was a wonderful ride and uh, it was a lot of fun. Fun is also how Frank looks back on his football career. I am fortunate to have a Super Bowl victory in my first year and then my last year, so I had a lot of moments in the NFL which were great moments. It is caught that time by John Frank. Yeah, John Frank. And the camaraderie, you don't ever have that again in anything else you do. I would consider that the highlight of my playing in the NFL for the 49ers. One of the beauties of the NFL is it's really a meritocracy. I mean, that game is one based on your merits. Steve Young was Mormon, I was Jewish, we had Baptist, Catholic, atheist, you name it. Wherever you're from, whoever you are, none of that really mattered. And what a lovely environment. When did this happen? Fortunately, medicine has maintained that. When someone's ill, it doesn't really matter as a physician who you're treating. It's beautiful. Have you noticed it getting worse? It's getting worse, yes. You don't have feel-good stories all the time, every day. But when you get one, you're reminded of why you've paid the price, whether it's a financial sacrifice to go to medical school or the hours. I treat them as though I'm you know, treating myself and I would want somebody to try as hard as they can to uncover what my challenges are and, and help me. Out of trouble, no softball today. I still, in earnest, try all the time to really help somebody. Okay. Now, you know, that's what I do. Next week, the shots of the year. Plus, the best of nearly 100 players and coaches wired for sound from the 2010 season. I only know I play one way, coach, but I'll do what I can. What's odds when that's getting Arby's at half? I'm always hungry, you know me. That's what he told you. That's exactly what he told me. Spike the ball out of bounds. I tell my wife I take the garbage out. Okay. Sometimes I don't. Next week on Presents. Hey, let's go win this thing, baby.